everybody welcome to my channel my name's Wang Geshi doing the 2023 no it's 2023 now I'm doing the 2024 MFA application and I was like I'm learning some things <laughs> so I wanted to share with the people what I'm learning <music> these applications for these grad school programs it's a lot but it's fine because you know we have tips and tricks to help get through them but I was like where are the tips and tricks like everything I was seeing was for like the auditions and I wasn't seeing much for like the applications I'm still in the application process I'm still learning full disclaimer but there were some things that I found that have helped me at least over the past month um go about the application just a few tips that i would um note especially if you're applying for to multiple um schools so number one i would pull up all the websites of all the schools i'm going to not necessarily all at once but i would literally like sit down and what i did was let me say not what you should do this is what i did okay and you can take these these notes as you see fit or don't. What I did was I just wrote down all of the dates that I needed to know. That meant the application deadline for six more months, some of the audition dates and where they were gonna be, any open houses, visitor dates, information sessions. It's only September, but so far I've been able to visit Juilliard and NYU Tisch. Well, it was the NYU tour. Um, for their grad program and I also saw a show at Yale Cabaret that's another thing that I would plug in there see if they have like any shows going on for their drama program even like their other arts programs and see if you can join you know you might meet some people you know that can help you along the way that will give you some tips and advice but most importantly you can see what the environment is like over there and like what their building gives and what the production gives so I definitely recommended that. I traveled three hours by train to Connecticut to go to the Yale Cabaret. Just one way, six hours total. But it was worth it because the show, so funny, so good. The talent was great. Like, it really made me excited to apply for Yale personally. Okay, number two, I think I'm only gonna give like four tips. Number two is find that audition coach, honey. Find that MFA audition coach. If you can, if you have the resources, um, if it's something that's accessible for you, find a coach because your coach will either help you with the four monologues, four plus monologues that you're gonna have to prepare, um, potentially will help you with your song, um, and or or they will help you with the monologues you've cho chosen. So either the coach will choose the monologues for you, help you go through you know potential monologues potential plays for you to find a monologue um or they'll at least coach you through the ones if you have some already chosen you know too too contemporary too classical get a shakespeare up in there figure out the high end language the verse versus prose all of that <laughs> first some coaches i know tennisilla she was really good um she has a youtube page so if you search like any other mfa help you've probably seen her videos she does coaching she helped me find my very first monologue um i definitely enjoyed her david ross yes david ross that's his name i haven't worked with him the other people i'm about to name i haven't worked with but i've heard about them so david ross i've heard about them if you've watched other youtube videos and they name drop a coach. It's probably David Ross. <laughs> Especially if they're the ones that are like, I got in. Like, I was like, oh, okay, David, I see you. And another one, you might have seen how to get into drama school is literally their website. And they have a lot of good coaching um, options. Of course, all from former uh, MFA students. So that's helpful. I plan on working with them because just based off their podcast and talking to um, Anthony has been super helpful. So them, 
those are like the three that I know of. Look in your area, look online. You might be able to do some virtual coaching if like your area doesn't have any available. If coaching is just something you cannot afford or like if you're going to acting class, number one, ask your acting teacher. I would ask my acting teacher if I couldn't afford to get like a coach specifically for this. Like, hey, can I perform this monologue for you like every so often? Like, can I perform these for you? Can you give me some feedback? You know, they can't find you your monologue, but and they can't tell you whether, you know, it's a good one for grad school and stuff. But if that's all you can afford right now, that's all you can afford. And if you can't afford that, I would like perform my monologues for the people in front of me, whether they're uh, drama school people or they're just family and friends. If you're like, I don't have my... I don't have my community, my theater people to perform in front of. Um, do it in front of just people who know you. And they can tell you, like, they can't give you, like, tips to make it better. But they can at least, like, tell you whether your performance is believable or not. You know, if you're watching television, you could be like, yeah, no. So, <laughs> at least they can give you a little, yeah, no. And so you can figure out something else. But... Also, if you don't have that, those resources, you might, I don't know, let me not even go there. A tip that I did that you can do, but it's up to you. This is what I'm doing. I told my recommenders ahead of time, hey, yo, I'm applying to these programs. So I need some letter of recommendations. So think you can do it? And they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. So that way when they get the emails and stuff from these schools, like, hey, well, I guess she's requesting a lot of recommendation from you over and over and over again. <laughs> They're not like blindsided. They're not just seeing the email like AK. You know, reach out to them on, you know, personal tip, teacher, student tip, director, actor tip, whoever it is you're reaching out to. I, I thought that it was better, more appropriate for me to hit them up personally first. And ASAP. That way, if they take a minute, you be like, hey, she says my recommendation isn't in yet. What's up? I wouldn't wait on that. I know that's like the last thing that's due. I would tell them ASAP. Be like, you don't even have to. No, I wouldn't even tell them you don't have to write it now. Hey, letter of recommendation. You're going to be getting that. Prepare yourself. Prepare a letter, please. Thank you. <laughs> but nicely. Don't ask like that. Ew. Okay. Number four. As you're going through the journey and, you know, you're asking questions to the schools about admissions questions and tours and open houses and events, reach out, not reach out, but note down the people who help you with that. Um, because you don't know if you're going to need their help in the future, too. Like, whether you go through another application session or you just have, like, a question about the application or auditions, you're going to want to keep their name in here or on your phone. That way you can reach out to them if you need anything else. Because clearly they were there to help you once, especially if you like are able to talk to former students or current students. Like anybody that you meet that's like involved with the program, definitely note down the contact information. And ask them questions galore. It doesn't even have to be about... Okay, it takes the grain of salt. It should be about the application, but also you can ask them potential, potentially, especially if you're acting students, asking... Jesus, words. If you're asking students or faculty about stuff, you know, you could even ask them about their experience, if they're comfortable sharing. Um... But keep them contacts, honey. Okay, my last word of advice that I'm taking for myself, and if other people want to take it too, they can, is to set your own deadlines earlier than the actual deadlines by, like, at the most, two weeks before the school's deadlines. Like, at the earliest, look, as early as you can complete the application, do it. Um, just because you don't know what can go wrong, um, you want to give yourself plenty of, like, 
leeway in case of anything, in case anything changes, in case you change your mind, in case you decide like you need to rewrite your whole like statement of purpose. You have plenty of time to do that. The sooner you complete your application, the sooner you can sign up for an audition slot. So if you're like, I definitely want to audition on this day, then you should, you know, maybe sign up sooner so that you have a better chance of signing up for that day. And also, if you're applying for a application waiver or you're international or you just have to like apply for anything else where there may be an exception, things have to be reviewed and rejected or accepted and that already like prolongs when you can submit for your audition date, you want to make sure that that's done early. Some schools have earlier deadlines for certain things like if you're doing that process be earlier than that deadline <laughs> just be early complete things as early as you can like this is just the application like get it all done and i don't know if i mentioned this before but i'm gonna say it just in case if i didn't i went on all the schools and i saw not just the dates but i saw i made i started my application on all the schools so that i could see what they're requiring for me like okay this is what i can expect to write about okay these are plays that they want to know if i've read or not they want to know like who i've worked with what i like you know that way it's already here or typed out or something and you're not realizing last minute like oh i need to gather this oh i need to reach out to that oh i need to do this that and the third like i already knew that stuff off top um yeah i think that's it i hope this wasn't overwhelming or uh, too much information because if you remember nothing else from this video tell me the application is the easiest part of this whole process so i'm gonna be confident okay i'm gonna be confident in my statement of purpose be confident in whatever i'm writing whatever i'm putting down because I don't have to present myself in front of anybody yet. Like the audition is for the nerves to potentially be there. This is just the application. Be confident. This is easy peasy. You got this. Okay. Just remember that if you remember nothing else. Anyways, that's all. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.